Any time you're on water, it's the, it's the most difficult kind of shooting there is. See, all these boats are choreographed. That's not just the normal traffic. They're choreographed to come through at key points in the dialogue. There's one assistant just cueing the boats. And that's really what you see in that place. It's not, as I said, there's no green screen, there's no trickery. I never use storyboards. That's for directors who can't see. I choreograph it, but I don't use storyboards. How can you lock yourself into a picture? It's like painting by numbers. It looks stilted. I want to be free in a space and move the camera and shoot wherever I want to shoot and be free to choose any angle. I don't want to be locked into some preconceived picture. The movie is dead that way. When you kill somebody, it's not exactly pleasant. It's a mess. I mean, think of the Nicole Simpson thing. People have always said I'm violent, but I'm not violent. I'm not a violent person. And what I show is not to sensationalize violence, but simply to give you the facts. <laughs> I found this truck on a recce in a village. It looks just like that. It was a chicken coop. So I loved it with all that junk on it, and I said, let's put an engine in this and use it. Because for me, a vehicle in the movie is like a character. Every car has to be chosen. You can't just say, get me a truck. This truck is unique. It has a personality. It's like a horse. You know, everything in the frame, you put in the frame. So if you're putting a vehicle in there, it's got to be appropriate to... The, you can't put a, a Nissan Pathfinder in there or a Range Rover. It would be ridiculous. In this case, I read a lot of Lee Po, or Lee Pai, and I grew to love him. And I read him now, even long after this movie is made. And then you read so much about, in Ireland, you read about the legends and the old kings, and in Sicily, there's such interesting places. I mean, there's nowhere in the world that you go that is not interesting. And my approach is to insinuate myself into the culture as much as I can. That's why sometimes it's hard for me to remember certain things. Because when I'm doing gangs in L.A., I'm really into the gang culture. I mean, I got to where I could read graffiti on the walls. I would go to rap clubs, and I, I, I mean, that's all that would be on my car is rap music. And I drench myself in the culture. And it's hard to undrench yourself. And just as you're doing that, you're inserting yourself into yet again a new culture. So to go from Sicily, which is such an amazingly rich culture, Arabic, Norman, I mean, that country has been invaded by everybody. To go from that to Ireland, with its incredible layers of legend and the old kings and the myths and the wonderful names, and that sometimes you you get confused a little culturally. You know, you have to, like, kind of blot out everything you've learned about the one culture and take in the new, and just as you've gotten that, you're getting into yet another one. And that's true of every movie. It doesn't really matter. It's a bit like a woman. You can learn from her, but to really learn from her, if she's teaching you something, you have to fall a little bit in love. We're a lot in love. And each time you go to one of these places, you end up with a love affair. I don't know why. Maybe that's just me. Or maybe it's something I learned from Clint. He rubbed off. <laughs> but you can't help but fall in love in these cultures because you become so much a part of it. Like these Chinese girls, Doreen. You have to love her. There's no way not to. I mean, she's so charming and smart and tough. What's not to like? You know, a tough, smart, streetwise, street smart girl, you know, who's slender as a blade of grass and sharp as a knife. You can't help but fall in love. And I think that's a part of making movies, too. I think falling in love is very much a part of filmmaking. It's something that nobody ever talks about for some reason. But you do need to fall in love when you make a movie. I don't know why. Perhaps it's my own defect. 
but I'm sure women don't like hearing this. I don't know if this is if you would hear the same thing from a, a female director or not, but maybe it's true. But I know that it's a wonderful thing because it's not that you're doing it in order to learn more, but you do end up learning more by doing it. You come closer. You become at one in a very crazy way. You become at one with the milieu. It's so easy. I don't know why. It's just there's so many gorgeous people around, you know, that it's irresistible. For me, writing and rehearsal are such intimate parts of making a movie. You see, I like all parts of making a movie. There's some directors who hate being on the set. They hate, they hate it. They love to be in the editing room. They love to putz around with the writer. But they hate to be out in the cold or the heat or the bugs. or the. I love being out of doors with a movie. I don't like being on a stage. I'd always rather be outside, and preferably in the mountains or someplace. But I like every part of it. I love the writing of it. I love the research of it. I love the recce because you get to see an entire country. I went to Korea a couple of years ago. I saw all of South Korea, every single part of it. I went to every town, every place. It was great. It was absolutely great. I had an instant cultural compression. I loved the shooting of it. I loved the rehearsal. I loved the finishing. And best of all, I loved sinking into a nice plush leather couch during the recording of the track when you got the whole L.A. fill behind the glass in front of you with the composer doing all the work and you sit there and suddenly you see this music come on the screen and you say, oh my, and it's a black and white print. And you think for the first time, I really made a movie. My God, it looks like a movie up there. And it's like, you feel like you're about 12 and it's the first time it occurs to you that you've done a movie. It's my favorite. I love it. I love it. But to get there, you bleed and you sweat and you hurt and you go through all kinds of things. But to me, it's like the cherry on top of the whipped cream on top of the sundae. That moment when you're just in this black couch looking through the glass and you see the anamorphic image in black and white and you see music and you say, I've done that. It's a movie. It's sublime really sublime moment. The best moment in movies, I think. And you can see there's so many non-actors everywhere. It's hard for me to pick them all out, but I've always loved, in every movie I've done, I've loved working with non-professional people. That is, people who are non-actors. I think everybody in some way is an actor because everybody acts different parts in life, but there's something about non-professionals used in the right way, in the right context, with the right actors that gives you something which is fresh and refreshing.